Uh, I'm feeling zen already, you guys. Welcome to Inside South Florida. Jason Carter here. Thank you so much for watching. And up first today, we have found an actual piece of paradise right here in South Florida. We visited Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens where curator of Japanese art, Carla Stansifer, and curator of education, Wendy Lowe, shared with us the Japanese oasis that is Murakami. This place is two things at once. It's serene, but it's also so spectacular. So spectacular. It is, it is. This is a gem that's very rare in South Florida. You know, an Asian cultural museum in all places, South Florida. So we are very proud to represent that. Oh, you represent it to the full. So tell us about Murakami and the museum and the Japanese gardens. Okay, I guess I'd have to go 100 years back, back in time. Let's take it back. Time travel back in time <laughs> with a gentleman called Joe Sakai. So he came from Miyazo City, Kyoto in Japan, um, came to Florida originally to start an agricultural Japanese colony. And um, he visited the site and he really thought this was a great place to start this dream of his. So he went back to Japan, um, recruited members from his family as well as investors and village people to come here. So that was back in the early 1900s and one of those people was George Tsukeji Murakami. And that's how the Yamato colony started and that's why we have Yamato Road on the term, uh, turnpike in I-95. Wow. From there, George stayed on. Um, he never went back to Japan to live. He kind of like fell in love with this uh, place at 80 years old. He became a US citizen, a great immigrant story. He invested in land and before he passed away um, in his late 80s, he decided to donate over 200 acres to Palm Beach County wow. to build this wonderful museum and gardens. And that's how we came to be here. The mission here, we know what his mission was. Now in 2023, we have this successful space beautiful space. What's the mission? Well, in a nutshell, our mission is to provide Japanese cultural experiences that educate and inspire and meet George's dream too, to give back to his adopted country and um, teach the community about Japanese culture in Japan. Tell us what's on display. Okay, so at the museum you will find uh, our main galleries where we have um, changing exhibitions throughout the year. We also have this wonderful tea house that we are in. It's a traditional tea house where we do tea classes, uh, tea workshops. Um, we also have a 16-acre Japanese garden with six historically inspired gardens of different time periods of Japan. Wow, that's um, awesome. So we have a theater, so we offer a lot of variety of programming at the museum. Carla, you are a curator of art here at the Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens, and that's a very important job because, as Wendy said, this place is so deeply authentic, with a mission that's deeply authentic. So when you bring in art, it has to be in alignment. What has to speak to you in order for art to be displayed? Here? Two things have to speak to me. It has to have the right aesthetic from the uh, you know traditional Japanese culture, uh, and it also I, I need to hear the artist's voice in their work. I need to have something unique that they are saying. Uh, whether it was an artist from 100 years ago, an artist from last week, it doesn't matter. I need to hear their message. Yeah. Carla, I have to know, what is the most interesting thing for you about existing in this space and working here at the Murakami and the Japanese Gardens? That is a good question. I've been working with Asian art you know, for a very long time and uh, lived in Japan and here and there. But I have to say the thing that makes the Murakami working here so special is that we can do not only Japanese culture, but also Japanese American culture. And a good example of that is our exhibit that we have up right now called Witness to Wartime. It's a really wonderful exhibit. We've got 82 drawings, watercolors, and paintings by one artist, Takuichi Fujii. And it's really great because we can trace his journey as an artist through the show, but we can also trace the journey of the community and what was happening. So you, you get that multi-layer effect. What is it about this place for you that makes it so magical? The garden is so amazing because when you go out there, we spend most of our modern day, our modern life, trying to block things out. Yeah. The garden is specifically designed to get you to open up and tune in. Um, our garden designer, Hoichi Kurisu, talks about that, how specific, specific elements and things that he pulled in to create that experience. And I, that, to me, is the most important thing here. You are a South Florida native. I am. Born and raised. Born and raised. But you understand how important that representation is here. Yes, it is. Um, 
in Florida, there's not a lot of Asian. Yeah. And like you said, not much Asian representation. Um, there is definitely a huge majority of Hispanic culture and Hispanics. Um, so I feel like our position here in South Florida really is that representation, that, other, that voice for at least the Japanese culture, mm -hmm. you know? And as an Asian American, I'm really proud that I work for an Asian cultural institution, um, kind of showcasing that Asians are represented you know, in Florida. And you can also find out more about the museum and the Japanese gardens at morakami.org. Wendy Lowe, thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you.